Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Arctic, and today we're jumping back into some more All the Mod 7 to the Sky. I hope you guys are ready. So I think today we should be jumping into Applied Energistics. Yes, we should be upgrading our storage system. Currently, we have been using Integrated Dynamics, and of course, I'm gonna to continue to use Integrated Dynamics in, a, in its own way. Um, but we do have Applied Energistics, which is going to be the main storage mod for this mod pack as of as of the time of me recording this at least. Um, and so that means we have a lot to do today. Now, where is this going to go? Well, I think down here is actually going to be the best place for us to get started with this mod. So I am breaking out these walls because I want a visual. I don't want this to be something that's hidden uh, because Applied Energistics is not like refined storage. It's actually very good looking uh, once you get all of the stuff set up. So yes, you will have cables and things like that, but I think the automation and all of that is really, really cool looking. And so I definitely don't want to hide it. I want this to be its own thing, and I want these to sort of appear like it's their own room for it. So with this build that's down here, I've been trying to figure out a way to light this area up. And I was doing some research on the framed blocks mod, um, and I was you know kind of looking at some different things, but framed blocks, actually have this unique feature which is uh kind of hidden you wouldn't even know it unless like somebody mentioned it or you read the documentation glowstone when right clicked on it makes it glow so i can do like concrete for example and i can have like hidden light sources throughout the base so if i for example place this framed down like that and then make it concrete and then click it with glowstone it now emits light. What? Where has this been all my life? How did I not know this? All right, so a few things before we get into Applied Energistics. Let's take a look here. I'm gonna need some framed drawers, but Applied Energistics does require, require uh, you to have a pretty good amount of Certus Quartz. Um, and Certus Quartz you can of course get from mining. Uh, we You can get this in the Twilight Forest I've seen. And so it can be in those caves. I'm sure you can find it on regular underground. Um, but I want it to be processed automatically so we can gain a bunch of it. And of course, we can get this via two different methods. There is crushed sky stone, which is its own process to be able to generate. We'd have to generate sky stone, which we do have plenty of sky stone dust for. Or we can just go ahead and upgrade our nether crushing that is going on. And we can upgrade this right here to a netherite mesh. And that should generate enough for us to kind of keep going. Um, it does look like this will give us charged Certus Quartz, which actually that'd be pretty nice. If we can, should I just go ahead and, I mean, I, I might do both. I might go ahead and also get a Sky Stone set up as well. But yeah, I definitely need to upgrade this to Netherite Mesh. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the mesh. This, this one, I believe, that is a functioning. And so yeah, just upgrade it to Emerald. And then I, of course, have enough from just that one visit uh, to the other dimension. I totally have enough. Let's grab our emerald. That's upgraded. And then uh, it was netherite, right? Netherite. And bam. Just like that. Oh, wait. Is, uh, is this... Does this not use... Oh, we have to upgrade it that way. Oh, that's so much easier. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, in this case, it's literally just a smithing table. The final mesh. And uh, did we get anything from that? Ooh, we got some ancient debris, just raw ancient debris. All right, I'm gonna throw this in here. And uh, while this is processing, I'm going to be looking into getting that skystone method up with an emerald mesh. I, I wonder if that's the highest one. All right, so here comes the fun part. Applied energistics and us actually getting right into it. Now, I have the sieving. It's been sieving for a little bit. Um, as you can see, I do have 38 Surtis Quartz crystals. Also, this produces Inferium Essence, which is going to be fun to get into later as we get into that mod. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and pump over here now. We should have access to all the stuff, including Fluix Dust, which is going to be a really important part of this. We actually get this via sieving, which is already a part of our sieving process. So the majority of the stuff we really already have, including Surtis Quartz Dust, which I think is one of the most tedious parts about getting into Applied Energistics, since everything glass-wise requires Certus dust. It is 
such a thing that we are going to need. Now, to end up getting Fluix Crystals, this is where we are going to have to use something special. We can throw it in water and let it grow. It's gonna take 20 minutes. Um, we could use, instead of just letting it set for 20 minutes, we can use, I don't know, Crystal Growth Accelerators, and you can place like five of these around it or six of them, and it will grow it much faster so long as you're giving it power. Or there's also this thing, which is a uh, flux aggregator, which is part of laser AE2, which is something that is, I think, more late game. Then there's also the enrichment chamber, which is what I'm going to be using. This is going to be the best way to do this. Um, so we just put the seed in and bam, it's going to produce this crystal. Um, otherwise, we just have to set and wait. And I don't think anybody wants to set and wait. Um, so right here is my enrichment chamber. And I got to find a place to plug this in for right now. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, I also need sand. So I'm going to apply some sand to this. And that's going to turn it into like a pebble. So sand. We do this. And we get the seeds. And it's going to double double this for us. So that's another great thing about this. Um, but this should be like a simple, straightforward process. You put the seed in, instead of waiting 20 minutes, it's gonna happen in a few seconds, and bam, we are going to get what we want, which is the Fluis Crystal. So, I'm gonna set up a little bit of a chest thing for this. Thankfully, this will output to a chest, but it will not let you import into it. Unfortunately, I wish that would change. Eventually, that would be a nice, like, upgrade, if they would just give an upgrade where it just allow you to pull the items in from a chest. Ah, uh, how that would fix things. So while I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna go ahead and make an inscriber. This is how we're gonna really do just about everything. And then I also need an energy acceptor. And this is how we're gonna get power into this inscriber. So while this is producing, let's go ahead and tap into this inscriber here. Now I do need the energy acceptor. I believe I'm next to it because I'm pretty sure this is not going to run off of this or does it? It looks like it has power. Is it running off of direct power? It is. So that's awesome. So what we're gonna be doing is actually making the calculation, engineering, logic, and silicon presses. Um, these are all going to be used to actually craft the logistic circuits that we're going to need to get into this mod and craft most of the things. Thankfully, this should be pretty simple. Maybe, there we go, it looks like I had to place the bottom item in first and that is going to give us our first one and so on and so forth as you can see just using the recipes that actually they use normally uh and it ends up making this so we've completed an advancement to unknown technologies all right so with all of these we kind of want to jump ahead a little bit so this inscriber currently is a really basic thing as you can see i was struggling with how these get inserted well, there is an upgrade called an advanced inscriber, and all it needs is these uh, engineering processors. And so if we can go ahead and make these, just grind them out real quick, we only need two of them, we can actually make the advanced inscriber, which is so much better and will make our processes so much faster. So to get started with this, literally I just need to make this uh, which, by the way, there, there's just something special we'll talk about later. But right here, engineering. It's just a diamond in this, and it's going to make the circuit. The, to complete the circuit, we have to do redstone, and then we also need printed silicon, which printed silicon is also its own thing. Um, as you've seen, we made that press. Now, to get silicon, I kind of glossed over that. Um, you just take that Certus Quartz dust that we have tons of, and you just smelt some of it, and it turns right into silicon. And just like that, we have ourselves an advanced inscriber. Ah, this is going to be so much nicer. Now, let's see. Does this one directly connect? It does. I wonder if they have... They must have that turned on or something, or maybe that's been changed. So, what makes this so much better? Well, originally, on the regular inscriber, you can only put one item in at a time. That is not the case with this. This, you can put a whole stack in, and you can upgrade. And I think you also get more acceleration slots as well. I think the other one only had three, if I remember correctly. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so you can just set this and let it go. Good part about this is I need to make at least three of them to get started. So um, I'm, I'm slowly but surely working on till I get six of these circuits now. Once I have six, we will be set. We'll have one 
that'll be set up for silicon um, that will always be running. We'll have one that can do all these others and eventually we'll have a setup for all of them. So yes, th this is all temporary where this is located. This will have its own space, I promise. This is just to sort of get started with this. Um, and uh, we're getting pretty good. I think we're doing pretty good right where we're at. Uh, let's take one more of these. Uh, actually, I guess I could have taken all of them because this is going to go immediate here. Um, now, all of this will be automated sooner or later. Eventually it will be. Um, we can actually probably make some speed upgrades that would uh, kind of accelerate this. But the main thing is I just need a little bit of all of these to be processed. So right away, I can go ahead and say, let's go ahead and throw these in. I just need all of them. I need a circuit for every single one of these to be processed. So I've ran into a point where I need to make some sort of decision because I don't know if these mods work in, in combination with one another. I would hope they do, um, but it's what kind of housings or cells do I want to go with that are going to contain my items? Because it does look like there are some new ones here from AE2 Things, which is also the same mod that I'm using from Advanced Subscribers. Um, now, the cool part about the AE2 Things discs is these work just like refined storage. So if you're used to refined storage, this is the way to go. It just holds a flat 1,000 items, uh, or in this case, 4,016, just like refined storage. Whereas the regular discs, they don't work that way. Um, the regular discs will hold 63 individual item types, and then you have a set amount of data on the discs that, uh, is, or bytes, um, that can be filled up. And it's, it's a whole lot more confusing to understand how, how much, uh, that equals. Uh, but you can hold 63 types of items. So if you have a bunch of broken armor pieces or armor pieces that are pretty broken, it's going to take up more of those type slots. So I'm kind of thinking at the cost of potentially risking, because I'm always kind of scared of using modded discs. Um, I'm going to go with it. I'm going to go with it. This should work. Um, so long as things don't change. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try out these discs. These are more like refined storage. Whereas the other ones, I, I don't know. I just think these are definitely going to be better. However, I do need amethyst shards to get this. Luckily, that's not too bad. We can take some basalt and all we need is one and then we can EMC it. Uh, but yeah, these are going to be amethyst shards as you see right here. So I just kind of take some basalt and I'm just going to throw some into the uh, sieve that I have going for my netherite. This process is also going to give us some flux dust, which is actually kind of nice. This is used for getting into flux networks which we're probably gonna get into very soon. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the, of course, runes, which is from Forbidden Arcanus, which I'm, that's gonna be something we also get into soon, soon. Uh, there's so many mods in this pack and there's so much I want to do. Uh, uh, and I can't wait to do them. All right, so we'll throw this in. This can be EMC'd, thankfully. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a few of those. I don't know how many we're gonna need exactly. But I do want to make a few disk drives. Now, these drives are going to need to go into this. And we're also going to need some cables. Let's actually check on this. I should have a pretty decent amount of fluids crystals that built up from earlier. Uh, and uh, we should be able to make ourselves some cables here. This is going to be how we route everything. We're going to need plenty of those. We're going to need ourselves a crafting terminal, which is going to require that glass. Crafting terminal is a must. Like you can go ahead and make a regular terminal, but if, man, the crafting, if you don't have the crafting, then what's the point? I really feel that way. So we have the annihilation cores um, and then the formation cores. These are basically the same as refined. If you're used to refined, this should all be kind of familiar. Here's a regular ME terminal, but we want to make it into a crafting one. So there's the terminal. Now we just need to make the disk drive. Now, honestly, all you need is an energy acceptor, which I, I don't even know if we need an energy acceptor. I'm gonna see over here by connecting this directly if we actually even need that setup. Um, let's go ahead and hook this in because really all you need is a cable, disk drive, and an ME terminal. And as you can see, the, the device is offline. So that's gonna give me the indication that, hey, this does need power. Um, unlike the other machine. So that's good to know. Uh, but really, this is all we need. We need uh, an energy acceptor, an ME drive, an ME terminal, and that's it. 
but I do recommend an energy cell. You are going to thank me later, because if you start putting a bunch of items in here, the energy acceptor might cause a little bit of problems with power, and you might lose uh, the power on your Emmy terminal, turning it off as you're putting a bunch of items in. So you definitely want this energy cell as a nice buffer. And what you'll do is you'll connect the energy acceptor to the energy cell, and then you'll have your drives connected to this. Now there's also channels, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, but let me go ahead and craft another RF tools um, wireless cell, and uh, we're gonna get to placing this thing. So right down here is where this is going to go for right now. Um, so I have my dimensional cell. Let's go ahead and get it linked up. We'll set the power to make sure it's out. That should go into an energy acceptor. And then we also have this, which everything is going to connect to and charge up, as you can see. Um, and now a disk drive. As of right now, I should be able to use this and connect a drive up really anywhere. Um, I guess technically I can place it here and then we'll place a terminal next to that. Um, and then I'm going to run my cables off of this. This is really just doing power. And go ahead and drop this down. So weird seeing like a highlight to where it's going to be placed. And then I'm also going to need a cable connecting over here. And if you were to dye your cables, you can actually change the color of your terminal glass, um, which is kind of nice. As you can see right here, I did not make that far enough. This actually has to connect off like that. I can probably go ahead and get rid of this since that does connect there. And make it a little bit more seamless. So this is currently a terminal and it is all set up and ready to go. Um, now, all we need is to put a disc in here. I went ahead and made a deep item storage, storage for dummies. I hate how it insults me there. Uh, but this right here is a 4K disc drive. We throw it right in. It's gonna hold just a flat 4,000 items. And uh, I can go ahead and display that by just throwing these in here. And as you can see, it's holding all of our items and we can change the size of this. If I had my UI a lot larger, um, we could, of course, make this taller or small. Um, you can set it to remember your search, which is kind of nice. And then there's autofocus on and off. I like to use JEI. I wish it had like JEI both, but I like to use JEI over here um, and have both of them mixed together. You can have fluids. And then, of course, we have auto crafting and you have the ability to check your auto crafting and all of that good stuff. Ha! Huh, so much, so much here. Um, now, this isn't exactly where this terminal is going to stay. Eventually, we're going to have a wireless terminal. But yeah, let me go ahead and explain channels because that's where things can get a little bit confusing. So at the moment, we should only be using two channels. And I think the best way to display that is by making some smart cable. Now, to make smart cable, as you can see, we have Fluix Emmy smart cable. We need to make a covered cable. Um, now, to cover it, we just use some sort of wool of some sort. And let's say white wool should be the best that we have right now. And cable, let's see, actually Fluix. Did I use all of it? There's no way I used all of it. Oh, that's right, I threw it back down into my storage down here. I guess we can probably use this to craft it. Let's grab some redstone because we do need redstone and glowstone. So glowstone and redstone, perfect. And we can make our own cable down here using this. Perfect, there's my 21 cable. Let's go ahead and convert this over, just like so. And then we're gonna convert it into smart cable, just like that. And we have 21 smart cable. Um, so the purpose of smart cable is to help you see where we are at as far as uh, uh, channels being used goes. So the best way to demonstrate this is by placing these. And let's go ahead and place that. Now. At the moment, this cable, with while connected here, is displaying one blue line, one blue line right there. That one line says, hey, we have a channel being used. Now, when I place down this ME terminal, now we have two lines. So keep in mind that on a basic system like this, on a basic system right here, you can only have eight channels connected to this single colored cable. Um, that will be connected to all of this drive and everything else. Now, to extend that, what you'd have to make is a controller. And controller is actually not that bad. The controller from Applied Energistics will give you 32 channels per side. 
But keep in mind, this can become a multi-block in where all of the sides of the multi-block, every single side can have 32 channels. So you can get a ton of channels out of this if needed, um, which you probably won't need that many channels. However, 32 channels is nice, but you can only get 32 channels out of it if you make yourself dense cable and the dense cable can carry 32 channels. Uh, however, to get in the branch off of that, you need to go down to the uh, dense to the lower end cables in which you can get, uh, I believe it's eight off of that, uh, that line. And so la later on, I will demonstrate this better, but yeah, that's, that's how you're gonna end up doing it. Cause if you use these basic cables, you're still only going to get eight channels off of the side. The only way to extend is to make sure you're using that dense cable and then using these cables to extend off and getting eight channels off of every side of that up to 32. Of course you have to do your math. It's hard to explain without showing, but yeah, that's the general consensus. Now I definitely want to get into the wireless crafting terminal, uh, but to be able to do that, I am going to need myself a security terminal, which did cost me a 16 K storage component uh, to be able to make. Now to craft this, it's actually not too bad. It is going to require a bit of the quartz glass. So I'm just going to need some glass here. And, uh, this is just a dense, basically it's just a, a better version of the energy cell that we are currently using. However, we're going to need eight individual to make this. And I'm slowly but surely running out of service courts. So at this point I now have, I believe everything I need. I have an ME wireless access point. I have a security terminal and I have my wireless crafting terminal. I believe this is what you need in order to get yourself a wireless setup to a crafting grid. So that way we can access this setup uh, pretty much anywhere around our base. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and place my security terminal right here. And then above that, I'm gonna put my access point. Uh, it doesn't have to be specifically like this, but I am showing this as an example. Now, to get this wireless ter uh, crafting terminal linked to our network, right here that you can see, we have a range of 16 meters. Of course, we have to put upgrades in here to do that, to make it go further. Um, we basically have to put this in here, and now that is linked. This also is going to need power. Um, however, I don't know if it's going to accept regular power. Okay, good. It does accept regular power, which is great. That is good to know. Um, so it's accepting FE, which is, you know, translating into AE, which is really nice. So that upgrade, by the way, is called a wireless booster card. Now there is an infinity range booster card that we can get later on, but this is going to help boost the range of this because 16 blocks is not that far. And I can put eight in, that gives us 36 blocks now, which isn't bad. That's basically the uh, standard size that refined storage can go. But of course we can go even more. It's just gonna cost, I think, more and more power the more of these we put in here. Um, now keep in mind, this is gonna be kind of a good example. This is using 40 AE a tick, 40 FE, I'm pretty sure it converts the same. But we're gonna notice now, we are using four channels. One, two, three, four, right there, all blue because this uses a channel, the security terminal uses a channel, our crafting terminal is using a channel, and our ME drive is using a channel. Now, good thing is, we technically don't need this ME terminal because we have it right here. And uh, we should be able to access all of our items that are in this drive via this crafting terminal from anywhere now since well, it should all reach within our base, 80 blocks or so. So at the moment, I'm gonna try my best uh, to make myself a 64K. Uh, now you need 27 1Ks, which I've already spent a bunch of time making, barely having enough Certus Quartz. Uh, thankfully, we have all the Certus Quartz dust that I was able to convert into Certus Quartz. Otherwise, I would have been waiting forever. Um, so this right here, I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in and we're gonna make all of these 4K drives and it's just, it's incremental. So then we're gonna upgrade that, take six of those, and that's gonna give us three 16s, and the 16s are going to go into, it looks 64s, but they have, this goes all the way up to 256? When they start making them discs, I don't remember them, them existing, but I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade that. I need a calculation processor. Surprise, I don't have that, but I am going to need to grab one. I think I have the raw ones in here. Calc, yeah, calculation processors. Just need one, it seems. That's all I need. 
and then I can uh, make a 64k drive. So grab this, bam! All of the all the back and forth that's hopefully going to end soon, where all of our storage will be in one place and not like here and there and blah blah. blah. Ah, things are going to get a lot easier here soon. So this is going to be upgraded into, if I can find it, yeah, a 64K drive. And then we are going to be turning this into an AE2 Things drive right here, 64K disk, bam. And this should provide enough storage for me to dump all of my base drives, or all of my base chest here into this storage. So it is going to be a bit of a process, as I do need to have this. Uh, but I think we should be able to do this. Now, I think there's a hotkey that I can assign to open this, which will make it so much easier. So inside the hotkeys, it's called Open Wireless Terminal. I'm going to set mine to Control plus E. And hopefully there's no conflicts. It does show there is one, but we'll see. Does it work? Yes, it does work. And uh, is this still able to be put in a bobble slot or anything? No, it just has to stay in your inventory. So long as it's in your inventory, as you can see, I am opening it up and it's being used. But it looks like it runs out of power as it is actively open. That's kind of interesting. So I've officially disconnected all of my cabling. Now there is still one thing left to do, and that is how do you hook into an, extor uh, an external uh, device, such as our storage controller, the same way we had before. To do that, I am going to need a storage bus. So to hook this in, I literally just place the storage bus on the bottom of here. I think it has, I don't know if it has to be connected directly to cable. No, not yet. But we run this through, make sure the cables are connected. Now at the moment, you notice it should be blue. Let's see, do we have, can we access our redstone? Yes, okay. So there we go. Everything is hooked up and uh, all of our stuff is connected, which is perfect. And I'm just running this right through here. If we go down to the other side, as you can see, I'm going to be removing this. If we go down here, everything's connected. I just have this one main cable running through. Later on, this these cablings will end up changing probably. But uh, yeah, you can see it did add another channel being used. So now we have five out of the total of eight channels being used but we can now access all of the stuff that are that are in those storage drawers, which uh, is so nice. That makes it so much easier on us. So another good thing about Applied Energistics is we can actually facade this stuff. We are going to end up facading it later on. I'm not gonna do it right now, but there are plenty of facades. If you have scrolled through the JEI, you will have come across a massive panels of facades. All of these are able to be made with cable anchors so you basically make yourself a cable anchor and you surround a block with four cable anchors and it will make a facade out of any of these materials. There's a lot of them, yeah. Um, and this right here is the cable anchor. So it's very, very simple to get into. We will definitely be using it for this, for sure. Uh, as you can see, this this nice open area. My plans later on are for these to be like the crafting, the auto crafting cells. Uh, you're gonna see, there's gonna be a whole lot of cool stuff happening in this middle section with this mod. But we have effectively moved our storage network over to Applied Energistics, and I couldn't be more happier. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, click that subscribe button. And of course, guys, I wanna thank the sponsor of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks going to Oni, or Oni. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord, becoming a Discord Premium member and supporting these videos. And guys, if you're interested in supporting the channel or just hanging out on the Discord, join at discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. It is a great community and I would love for you guys to join. We are over 25,000 members strong uh, and growing every single day. Thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Comment down below, give this video a thumbs up. And as always, Thanks for watching.